Welcome to the first in a series of four bite-sized legal insight talks that we're doing for Professional Liverpool and they're short sharp insights into particular topics that people have raised with us. Um, a few housekeeping issues, um, if the platform goes down then just come out and come back in again and um, we're recording this session and we're hoping to use it in a variety of ways. Um, if you've got a problem with that can you put a message in the chat box please? Um, that would be great. So let's start with a bit of context. First of all, what we do, we draft key commercial documents and we provide discrete or ongoing commercial advice, advise directors and shareholders on their duties and responsibilities, and we resolve disputes. And in that context, we come across directors all the time and NEDs. Um, but what's interesting about that is that there's not a lot of use of NEDs by professional services, which I've, I've always found curious, really, given that professional services are quite a silo mentality. Um, objectives today, well, by the end of the session, you'll come away with an understanding of the status of an ed, the key differences between executive and non-executive directors, the role of an ed, the value that an ed might bring to your business, and what to think about when selecting an ed. And finally, the employment status of an ed. So that gives you a little bit of background and I will hand over to Steve. Okay, thanks Libby. Uh, quick introduction to me, I'm a consultant solicitor at uh, DGB Solicitors. I've actually worked in the legal industry for nearly 40 years. I've set up and run a number of businesses and uh, I'm still a, an advisor to a number of privately owned businesses. Um, We've had a look at the delegate list that I appreciate they're not all uh, with us at the moment anyway. Um, but this session is designed to be flexible and interactive. So any questions or queries along the way, please uh, fire those out. Um, let's start with a quick, I was going to say round table, but um, Baron, have you got any experience of, uh, of NEDs or um, in respect of dealings with NEDs or placing of NEDs within positions? What's your, um, what's your experience of NEDs, if any? Did you get that, Baron? Uh, sorry, can you repeat this, sorry? Yeah, I, I was just asking whether you've got any experience of dealing with, um, with non-executive directors um, so, or all uh, this is so new to you. Uh, no, no, and not exactly because if I if I talk about my experience, so I'm a, um, I'm a lawyer with a management degree, and I've dealt with both lawyers and non-executive directors, both. I see, I see. Okay, well that's that's fine. Well, let me let me start by just giving you a bit of a history as to um, the NED role. Uh, I think I'll start by saying the the NED. Uh, title is something of a misnomer mm -hmm. because it actually describes what they don't do. I think it would be far better and more helpful if the title actually reflected what they did do, which mm -hmm. is which is to be an independent director. Um, perhaps the title will change uh, at some stage. It could be independent director or supervisory director, I think might be a better title. But in terms of their position, uh, the company board plays a crucial role in a large public company and also for that matter in smaller private enterprises. And there's a whole raft of rules and regulations which have been developed to make sure that the board has got the capacity to fulfil their obligations and duties. Mm -hmm. as, as part of a um, historical um, look at why NEDs actually came into, um, into the picture. If we go back to the 1980s uh, with a series of pretty catastrophic corporate failures, this led to something called the Cadbury Report. Mm -hmm. And that report was set up to, to improve the oversight of companies generally, to improve financial reporting and to try and strengthen the internal controls within a company. That was a report uh, commissioned in 1992. It was followed by a series of other reports, a Hample report in 1998, Higgs report 2003, and then a further report 
in 2009. That's the Walker report. Mm -hmm. And, and, a, and the, the raft of recommendations led actually to the compilation of the UK Corporate Governance Code 2018, um, which now dictates and tries to influence the best corporate governance within not just large companies, but also private companies. There is an expectation that smaller private companies uh, will conform to some of these regulations. So that code, um, despite what perhaps a lot of company directors might think, it's not the preserve of very large, substantial sort of FTSE 100 companies. Um, the principle behind the code is pretty much uh, comply, or if you don't comply, explain the reasons why you're not. According to the actual code itself, um, the board of a company, certainly for a FTSE 350 company, um, should include 50% of the board as being NEDs, non-executive directors. So if you had a board comprising 50% non-executive directors, you'll appreciate that, the, that those people, those directors have the potential to have a very significant input. Um, they act as a very powerful or how, can act as a very powerful um, check and balance. So to describe what NEDs are expected to do, the code very helpfully says they are there to provide constructive challenge, to deliver strategic guidance and to offer specialist advice and to hold the management to account. So those things are the absolute essence of the, the NED role. At this point, it's probably quite useful to quote from a couple of chairmen of large organisations where it says, uh, good NEDs have the ability to stand up to the executive and to demonstrate their role, which is to hold the executive to account for the managing the delivery of the business. And a second German um, refers to NEDs as having a broad, deep reservoir of knowledge and skills accru accrued during a wide business career. And that he actually says, we like directors who have had experience of things going wrong. When you've gone through these difficult times, you have profound learnings through, through those experiences. So those quotes, one from a Mr. Armut, uh, sorry, Sir John Armut, the Olympic Delivery um, Authority, and one from somebody called Mr. Marshall, who's the chairman of Balfour BT. So in summary, on this particular point, um, the NEDs appointed to a company board have got the real potential to be very effective, to be valuable members of the board, and to help ensure good governance within a company. Fundamentally, they can provide an independent voice, put forward opinions, ensure accountability, protect the shareholders' interests, and, and fundamentally help with the business decision-making process. And that will all hopefully guide and steer the company in the best possible direction. At this point, I'd probably just emphasize the word potential. Um, only if they are used properly and very well by the board, um, you'll appreciate that having NEDs within a company hasn't actually pre prevented some of the spectacular corporate failures uh, that we've seen, certainly in the UK, Varen. Um, if I refer to a couple of companies here, uh, Carillion was a catastrophic failure. There was a major problem with Tesco. And we've had the, the recent um, scandal, really, with regard to the post office. Um, and again, all of those companies had non-executive directors on their boards. 
So in summary, I'd say they are helpful, but what they're not is a panacea to some of the problems. So at this point, I'll, I'll hand back to, to Debbie to carry on with uh, some further background on the, the NED role. We've, we've had, uh, thanks for that, Steve, we've had a little bit of a history of how they came about, all about corporate governments, all about businesses being run better, and all about holding the board to account. Um, but what, what's the actual role of a NED? Because when I'm speaking to people, it, it surprises me how even people who are really experienced in business don't understand that the NED is actually a statutory director. In other words, they are a director at Companies House. Either a member of the board of directors, but they are not a member of the executive management team. So what's the difference there? Well, the executive management team are directors, statutory directors at Companies House, but they deal with the day-to-day -day running and management of the company. They make the day-to-day -day decisions. And there's a very definite separation of roles for the NEDs, which is important if you think about it, because that's why NEDs uh, came about. It's that independence of view, that um, being supportive to the board, but the ability to hold the board to account and question their decisions sometimes. That brings us on to another point that, that very often um, people don't appreciate. If you are a statutory director of a company, then you have full responsibility for the financial performance of that company. So if you are a NED, you are absolutely as financially responsible for that company as the finance director. It's a highly responsible role. And anyone considering taking a NED role would want to take a good look at the finances of the company um, that they're looking to get involved with. What's their purpose? Well, they operate as a check and balance and a support to the board. A good NED will be um, friendly uh, uh, and engaged with the board, but keep that element of distance. They're there to provide support. They actually offer a potential leapfrog opportunity. Um, that business might be able to take advantage of the NED's experience and jump um, two places in its business plan. They're a sense check and um, to an extent can help with mentoring. Um, it's actually quite a number of directors that I've worked with over the years have commented to me that it can be quite lonely on a board, lonely at the top with a lot of responsibility. So a NED um, who's very experienced in the area that, you, that you're looking for assistance with can be a, a really good support and a mentor to the directors. And don't forget about knowledge. Um, most NEDs have run their own business in some shape and form, and that will give them a wide breadth of knowledge. And that knowledge is all available to you to draw down on. And if we come back to the context of this talk, which is about strengthening um, and growing your professional services um, practice, all of those aspects could be extremely helpful in enabling you to move your business forward. And we'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, hand back to you on the issue of value, Steve. Yeah, uh, thanks, David. So in terms of what the, the NED might be able to bring to your business, um, I think what we're talking about is uh, an in independent, experienced individual with a breadth of experience, who's high caliber, who's got particular knowledge and particular skills. They can often be selected on the basis that they've got this specialist um, knowledge in a particular sector, or for that matter, they might have some crucial connections which are gonna be beneficial to a company. What they certainly should be doing is increasing the diversity on a particular company board. The crucial part about their role being that what they can do is bring that independent objective thinking they can if they're allowed to of course they can bring different and fresh perspectives to uh, the approach and the the tactics that a board might um, operate they can certainly bring competence to a board they can uh, 
introduce their experience. They can comment upon, for example, a company's marketing strategy, business planning. They can help with financial planning. Generally, they can also help with uh, accountability of the company. And effectively, they can be always uh, questioning in a very constructive way, it has to be said. They're not there to undermine the board, they're there to help the board. And that will in turn help the corporate responsibility and the, the prospects of the company, hopefully longer term. Some of the, the certainly the key um, roles, and perhaps these will become even more important um, for companies in this uh, post-COVID and uh, post, certainly post-Brexit world for the UK, is in particular fields of uh, risk management for the company, uh, financial management, absolutely key, as you'll appreciate, and technology. Just to quote from one chairman again, um, he says, uh, risk is a massive issue now. You need to understand the risks and be clear about what the board is doing and about how to mitigate those risks. And Ned can certainly, uh, with that experience that they've gained in different disciplines, perhaps across different sectors, they can be invaluable to a board in terms of uh, those individual um, risks which all companies face. Uh, what they can do also is bring you business connections and certainly opportunities um, which might not be available to the existing um, directors on a board. What you'd hope from your, your NED um, certainly is to be providing good communication and powerful um, influencing skills. They're there not to impose the um, their will and their wishes, but they're, they're fundamentally, as we've said, to help the board. And then finally, um, there's an expectation that certainly customers and the employees of the company um, will want clearly defined policies on things, for example, such as climate change and sustainability of the actual business. And again, there's no reason why NEDs cannot be advancing their opinions uh, to the board members to try and help achieve some of those things, which may well be absolutely crucial for the company's customers and equally importantly for the company's employees. So in, in summary, in terms of the value, what I'd say is if the NEDs are well-trained and equally reasonably and well remunerated, they're allowed to perform the functions within a, a large or for that matter, a small company. There's no doubt that what they should be bringing is that independent voice, uh, professionalism to the board, any key connections that they might have, and also bringing that experience of financial and risk strategies. At the most basic level, these effective NEDs can assist the board, they can improve the company, they can help it to thrive and prosper. And again, the very essence of, of NEDs, they can also help prote protect the shareholders' interests. Again, all designed to help the company um, prosper, and uh, survive and thrive. So they're the values. And at this point, I'll hand back to Debbie in terms of selecting a NED. Well, we're gonna talk about selecting a NED now. You've, you understand the value. Um, you're thinking about who you might want to use, where to start. The first thing to think about is the size of your business because um, you may have a really ambitious business plan where you're going to go to naught to a million in 
in 12 months, or you may, um, you know, you're very lucky if you've got that, but you may be in a, in a more, a, a, a slower growing business, a business that's been going for quite a number of years and you've reached a point and you want to look at a net to help you uh, make that next move forward. So the first thing you need to think about is have you got the ability to pay a net? The going rate is generally between 25 and 35,000 per annum. And that's based on about 12 to 18 days work per year. So obviously you need to have um, a, a good financial position to be able to afford that. The next thing that you're going to think about is the skill set that you need. So typically a lot of NEDs um, have a financial background. And the, the reason for that is obvious. Steve started off by talking about a few disasters previously and having that outside check and balance on finance is um, obviously extremely useful. But there are a whole host of um, um, areas of expertise that are useful for NEDs. Uh, you might choose somebody who's had industry experience so they've they're in the same line of business as you are. They've um, taken their business, sold it, and um, are interested in helping somebody else take their business forward. They might have expertise in your direction of travel. Um, you might have floating your company um, on, the, on the horizon, so you might need that particular expertise. Or you may have an area in your business that you want to strengthen, for example, marketing um, or corporate social responsibility. That's something that's really coming to the fore now with the climate change issues. Those are general comments, but why might a professional services company use a NED? Because today's talk is about the use of NED by professional, uh, use of NEDs by professional services. My comment on that is we in professional services very much tend to have a silo approach. And we're at a point where the modernization and uh, providing relevant services to our clients is absolutely key. When we come out of COVID now, it's not the world that we left behind. Expectations are different, the use of technology is different, and the opportunities are different. I think um, we're maybe not great at customer journeys as well, and having somebody with marketing expertise to come in and look at look at how uh, we're dealing with that would be extremely useful. I'll come back to Steve now to just talk about the employment status of an ed. Okay, thanks. So just um, a couple of minutes on the, the actual status of a ned so far as the employment position. As Debbie's mentioned, the executive and the non-executive directors both actually have the same duty uh, and obligations to exercise reasonable care, skill and diligence in what they do in their positions. The NEDs are certainly bound by the obligations and regulations in the UK uh, to that extent of the Companies Act 2006. The scope of their duty actually will vary according to the um, director's defined roles. And those roles and duties sh should be uh, well set out and fully set out in the letter of, uh, letter of appointment um, or a contract. And that will um, define, as I say, the, the nature of um, the NEDs position within the company. So the NED role, it's not strictly an employee of the company, they're classed as a, an independent office holder. It's more akin to um, a consultant style relationship with the, uh, with the business. As I say, they are legally responsible for the actions of the company, just as the same as the employed executive directors. There's just a couple of uh, reminders that um, I'll mention in terms of cases where NEDs have actually been held liable. In one case, a solicitor who actually failed to report some serious misconduct by other members of staff at a, um, at a firm was actually fined £2,000 by the Solicitor's Regulation Authority. 
the solicitor was a was a ned within the firm but he was not in any way involved in the day-to-day -day running of the practice uh, however there was a good reason for the ned to um to be responsible and he faced the uh, the penalty um not uh, at a lesser lesser scale than the executive directors but nonetheless was still held liable that tells us it's a very good reason for the neds to um to check very carefully their terms of appointment and also any liability cover that they might need to have in place the other example was a non-executive director who was actually banned by the fca um, whilst holding a non-executive director position. That individual's failures had lasted actually four years. And during that time, she was a non-executive director for two separate societies. Um, and there was a clear conflict of interest between those two positions. Uh, notwithstanding that clear conflict, she carried on uh, in those roles. She carried on certainly until the FCA caught, caught up with her and said that was a clear breach and she was banned from being a non-executive director on the basis that she had failed to act with sufficient integrity. So the NEDs themselves work under a contract for services. Contrast that with a, an employee's position working under a contract of service. So for a long time, the NEDs have actually provided or can provide their services through a limited company, remembering all, always that they are office holders, not employees. For the purposes of tax, certainly with it, within the UK, um, they are treated in the same way as employees. So this means that the employers are actually required to operate a PAYE uh, system in respect of the fees that are actually paid to the directors. What I would say is it's crucial um, to identify the correct tax and national insurance treatment for the NEDs fees and expenses. Um, we're, not, we're not accountants, we're not um, expert tax advisors, so at that point um, we'd, we'd always defer and say, um, get some specialist tax advice on that particular um, subject. Um, but the crucial thing to remember in terms of their employment status in summary is NEDs are an office holder. Their appointment comes from the letter of appointment or the contract. That will define their role, their duties, the term of their appointment and uh, pay um, and of course it serves not just the ned but also the company to have very clear and well drafted um, letters of appointment and um, and or a contract just on a, on a final practical point um, all of the neds terms and conditions should be held at the company's registered office and they should be available for inspection. So that's just a practical point. That goes to uh, an element of um, compliance with companies' regulations. And for that matter, it's all very transparent. Um, those documents are available for um, public uh, inspection. So that summarizes very briefly the employment position. Um, we'll just move on to Conclusions at this point. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at the time actually. We're 10.33. Are you going to just uh, whiz through those points? Yeah, yeah. I mean, th th this is really just a, a quick fly through in terms of uh, bringing together what um, benefits NEDs can bring. So in short, they can bring experience and expertise to a company. They can bring key connections, they can bring certainly new opportunities. They act as that crucial independent voice, which is the essence of the NED role. 
they can provide a valuable insight and at the same time an oversight to help protect the company. They can help inform and, uh, and process company policies and the procedures and compliance. What these are all doing is complementing the board. The NEDs in professional services firms can also help with the overall planning, business strategy, uh, and guidance for a better managed company. They can actually improve the financial position of the company as well. And finally, actually having a NED on the board can be seen as a competitive advantage and also a reputational advantage. You'll appreciate if you've appointed a NED who's very well respected in a particular industry, well, that's going to sit very well with customers and potentially your employees as well. It's a move away from that silo mentality that, uh, that Debbie talked about earlier. So that's a quick summary of the, um, of the benefits. And at this point, I'll hand back to Debbie just for a couple of closing comments. Yes, I, I mean, my feeling is pretty much as I said before, we're moving into a post-COVID world. And I think it's a real opportunity for professional services to change the way they do things. But I'm conscious of time. Um, we've run over slightly. Um, very happy to deal with, that was a whistle-stop tour with a lot of information. Uh, very happy to deal with any questions you've got or do appreciate that people have got other things to get on to and might need to um, move off the call. Um, not sure if I'm assuming from that that Varen's got no input. Um, I'll just oh, mention... Oh, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, well, did you have anything you wanted to say at all? Uh, nothing as such. Lovely. Okay. Um, well, you'll get a copy of the recording and uh, very happy to take any questions you've got afterwards. Uh, we're doing a number of other bite-sized events on other key sort of commercial issues, so we'll send details of those over. But thanks very much for joining us this morning. It was a pleasure. Thank you, Thank you Thanks.